Hey everyone, it's Selena here. Thanks for uh, watching this tutorial. Um, I have a couple of videos out there that show you how to create a shadow layer for a JPEG or a PNG file um, using Inkscape. But this particular tutorial, I wanted to go over monograms. I see that monograms uh, are pretty popular right now. And um, sometimes, I mean, it's great to have a monogram, just the monogram itself, but sometimes, depending on what you're uh, putting it on, um, it looks really great with the shadow or with the back layer that's a little bit offset. Um, it offsets the original monogram. So that's what I'm going to show you how to create that using Inkscape. And just look at the information down below. I'll have the link there how to, because uh, sometimes some people don't know which uh, Inkscape link to use. There's some bogus ones out there. Um, might give your computer a virus or something. So I'll have the link down below on where to go for that. And then I'll also have information on the Monogram app that I use. I have an Android phone and I believe it's called Monogram It. And I think you can also find it on Apple or on iTunes. So um, I already have my Monogram file saved on my computer. So I'm just going to import that into um, Inkscape. And I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to be using shortcuts in this tutorial, but I'll also show you how to use the um, tools up here to get the same um, outcome. So this is the way I saved it. What I do when I uh, save my monograms, <clears throat> when I create the monogram on my phone, I just take a screenshot of it and then I just send it to myself. And this is how it comes in. So I don't need this rectangle here. I just want the letters. And this file is a PNG or a JPEG, one of the two, and I want it to be an SVG file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the top to path. I'm going to click on trace bitmap. And what that's going to do, it's going to bring up this box over here. Let's bring this here. And um, it's automatically selected to brightness cutoff. That's exactly what I want. And it's usually defaulted to a 0.45, but I have it at 60 for another image I did. I'm just going to leave it as is because um, that shouldn't affect it really, but it's just going to grab um, the black color. So I'm going to click update and then I'm going to click OK. And you can see that it just selected the letters. So this I can go ahead and discard. I'm just going to click on delete. So that's it. I'm done with the letters um, as far as making this an SVG. It's, it's an SVG now, so I'm going to get rid of this little box over here. Um, if you're not familiar with Inkscape, it can be kind of intimidating. There's just so much going on. If you've used Illustrator before, you can use that, um, or you can also use Inkscape. It's pretty similar to uh, Adobe Illustrator. Um, but, you know, it takes a little. I, I would recommend you go out there and look at some um, beginner tutorials on Inkscape just to kind of get you familiar with the basic um, tools that are here on the left hand side. Also just simple um, simple things like sizing. Um, if I just drag one of these corners and I you know drag it to make it a different size, you see how it I don't have any control as to it being um, stretched out. It's you know it's not staying in the shape that it should have been. I'm going to undo that scale. Um, what you would do is hold the control key down at the same time as dragging it and it keeps that same proportion. Um, but like I said, it's uh, I'm not going to teach all of that in, in this video. I just wanted to show you really quick on, you know, recommending you to, to watch some beginner videos on Inkscape. Um, because if, you know, me not showing you that and you might be dragging in and wondering how come my image is not staying the way it should be. It's There's little things that you should know um, when using the tools in this program. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I have the image selected. Like I said, I do use shortcuts using my keyboard, but I'll also show you how to uh, use the same commands using the tools up at the top. So to create a back layer or a shadow layer for this image, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I have my image selected. I'm going to click on the control key on my keyboard at the same time, I'm also going to click the letter D, as in David. Um, and what that's going to do, it's going to create a duplicate. Now when I do that, it doesn't look like anything happened. It's there, it's just directly on top of the other image. Um, 
so it, it looks like oh what happened it didn't do anything well I do have two images there while still having that image selected I'm just going to create another or change it to a different color just so that you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so that second that second image that I just created, the duplicate, is directly on top of the original. What I want to do is I want to send that um, image and I want it to be behind the original black one. And so by doing that, the shortcut to that, if you look on your keyboard, there's a section right by backspace that has home and delete, page up, page down. The home button as a shortcut will bring your image that's selected to the front and the end uh, key will bring your image to the back. So what I want to do is I want to send this purple image to the back. So when I do that it looks like it's deleted or that like it changed back to black. And no, all it did is it went right directly behind that black image. Um, so I'm going to move this over just so that you can see um, I'm going to do that same thing by duplicating it but I'm going to show you how to do it using the keys up here or the uh, commands up here. So in order to duplicate this, what I would do is go up to, let's see, I already forgot because I don't use, it's very rare that I use these. Um, duplicate. Okay, so it would be under the edit button. So if you click on that and drop it down, there's the duplicate. And as you can see to the right, all of these commands here are going to show you the shortcut. So right there it says control plus, like as in at the same time, the letter D. And that's what I use. So if you click on that, there's that duplicate there. Okay. Same thing for, um, I'm going to put this right back here. Now it's to the back, but I'll, I want to bring it back to the front. As I told you on the keyboard, the home button is going to bring that purple one all the way back up to the front. But if you want it to come up here, um, if you go up to object, this will raise it lower, raise to the top, lower to the bottom. So that home you see right here to the right, home is going to raise it to the top. And then end is going to lower it to the bottom. So let's click on home and there it is at the at the top. So um, going forward, I'm just going to keep using my shortcuts. Um, but that's just to let you know that as you scroll up here and look at all these different commands, if you look to the right, it shows you how to do it um, just by using your keyboard as a shortcut. Okay, so let's send this back. You know what, let's undo this because I, I want it to be directly behind it. Or you know what? We don't even have to do that. Let let me show you how to do that instead of doing all those commands. See, let's see. It's a little bit off center. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the two of them direct exactly on top of each other, right? Just the way it was when I made that duplicate. Um, if you go to the right hand side of your Inkscape, and there's all these different tools down here, this one is called Align and Distribute. If you click on that, it's kind of like Design Space when you select two different um, two or more um, objects and you use your align and dis distribute you can kind of like um, center it or align it to the left align it to the right what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get these two centered exactly um, together so by selecting this one it's going to center them just the way um, it's going to center them and then right underneath, it's, here it is, center on vertical axis, and then I also need to center on horizontal axis. So when I do that, there you go. They're both lined up, okay? So let's see. Now, I'm trying to see how do I select that. I need this one selected, but it's kind of hard since these are the same size, it's kind of hard for me to select that purple one with it behind it. Really, I guess it's okay. In this case, once I get this one offset, um, it, it really shouldn't matter. So, well, <laughs> I just gave you your your little um, tip on how to, how to align it over here, but okay, so we don't need that anymore. That was kind of um, not needed. But anyways, okay, so I have the, the purple layer is what I'm going to be using as that shadow layer. Okay, so I have that selected. And I'm going to show you up here on um, path, outset, 
this is the command that we need in order to kind of um, enlarge this back layer in order to, to, to make it, um, trying to look for the right words, you're going to create that outside layer in proportion to the top layer. Um, so outset is what we're looking for, and here's the shortcut. It's control, control key, and then the close parentheses, which is on the um, zero number on your keyboard. So I'm going to do that about four times. So I have it selected, so I'm going to use control, and then the close parentheses. So I'm going to do it one, two, three, four. Okay. Then I'm going to bring this over here. And let's zoom in so we can get a better look. Okay. And if you think that that looks great, then you can keep it as it is. If you want it a little bit thicker, you can go a couple more times. One, two. Bring it back over here. And I think that looks really pretty. That would look really pretty on with vinyl on a, on a mug or something. Okay. So that's how to create the outline uh, for your sh for the or like a shadow for a monogram. But sometimes I also like it when it's all filled in. So by that meaning all the white spaces are gone, but it's just the outside of that layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them both, and I'm going to do Control D, and I just made a duplicate, so I'm going to scoot that over to the right. Okay, so I'm going to move this top one over because I'm working with this one here. What you do in order to get rid of all this white on the inside, you would think, well, I'm just going to keep going and f keep going until it fills in. But look at that. That's like too much excess. I don't, uh, I don't, I think that's just too big. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't want it that big because it looks just like a big old blob now. So I'm going to undo. I don't even know how many times I did that. You know what? Instead of doing that, let's just delete that and du duplicate this again. Because I, I hit um, offset quite a bit of times. Okay, so let's go back over here. So I have this selected. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that right underneath the arrow key, which is what I have selected in order to move my items around, this one down below is called Edit Paths by Notes. This is the tool that I need in order to get rid of all this um, space in between. So I'm going to scroll in closer that you, so you can see. All images that you import into um, or everything that you have as far as an SVG on Inkscape, anytime you double click or you use this tool here, it's going to show you all the nodes. And what the nodes are, it's what pretty much makes um, the shape. So by selecting any one of these nodes, there's these little handles here. I can kind of mess with the um, shape of the image, right? So what I want to do is I want to delete all the nodes on the inside of this image. I don't want to delete any of the ones on the outside because I don't want to mess with the um, shape of it. I just want to fill it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag around these nodes and I'm clicking the delete button on my keyboard. And that's just getting rid of that shape on the inside or those curves and you know swirls and all that kind of stuff just getting rid of, of it all like I said just kind of be careful with um, not selecting anything on the outside because you don't want to mess with that shape oh there it is Okay, I'm going to scroll out so I can see. I got some more over here. Okay. 
Okay, right here is kind of the outside of the shape. So depending on which ones you delete might change the shape completely. Um, but I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay. Let's maybe get rid of that one. Okay, there we go. And if you delete one that you don't want and it kind of like messed with the shape completely, you just I'm going to bring this back up to the front, so I'm clicking on Home. Just, um, just click Undo so that you can undo that step. Okay, and then just place it right there. And now you can see between the two. So you have one that has, you know, basically the shape of that monogram, just a little bit offset so that you can create a layered um, project or you can delete all the nodes within and then have it filled in like that. Okay, so I hope um, that explain, you know, made you understand a little bit on how to use Inkscape with, when creating a, a layer or creating an offset image. And I also have a tutorial out there on how to do that for an actual image like a JPEG or um, a PNG that has detail. Um, and I'll, I'll link that down below so that you can take a look at that too. But if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And um, subscribe so that you can see my upcoming videos on um, things that have to do with design space. This is particularly in Inkscape, but this is the software that I use mainly for my um, projects for design space. When it's something that I cannot do in di design space, I always go to Inkscape. So I hope you enjoyed this video and give it a thumbs up. Thanks. See you in the next video.